Okay, so we go now to software. So this is the third topic under under this module, module 15 basic concepts uh, for a uh, computer. Okay, so software, so this is the most general, uh, in most general sense, this is a set of instructions or program uh, instructing a computer to do specific tasks. So as mentioned before in our previous uh, video lecture, software is uh, the part of the computer system that is uh, intangible, but it can be seen. Okay. So the, here, uh, software is a generic term used to describe computer programs. So this run the, uh, on our personal computers, even in our mobile phones, tablets, and other smart devices. Okay, so software is often used to describe all of the functional aspects of the computer that do not refer to its physical component because these are referred to as our hardware. Okay, scripts, applications, uh, programs, and a set of instructions, these are all terms often used to describe also the term software. Okay, so everything that runs in the computer from an operating system to a diagnostic tool, video game, or app. This can be defined as our software. Okay, so there are four categories of software. So these are, uh, first, programming software. So programming software, this is a set of tools to aid developers in writing the program or in creating a program okay so the various tools available are compilers linkers debuggers interpreters and text editors okay so this is the main function of the programming software so another uh, type is the system software so this serves as the base for application software okay um, this also includes device drivers operating systems uh, compilers, disk formatters, text editors, and utilities that helps the computer to operate more efficiently. Okay, so uh, system software also is responsible for managing hardware, okay, and providing basic non-task specific functions. So this also is usually written in the computer programming language. Okay, another is the application software. So this is intended to perform certain tasks. Example of this uh, software includes office suits, uh, gaming applications, database systems, and educational software. Okay, so what we use like the MS Word, okay, um, PowerPoint, and Excel. Okay, so this uh, application software also can be a single program or a collection of small programs. So this type of software is what consumers most typically think of as software, but um, there are a lot others, as especially uh, those which we mentioned before, okay, the programming and the system software. But this is the most common for us, okay, who are not a uh, computer um, genius, okay. So another is, or the next, or the a fourth type is the mal malicious software or malware. So this software is intentionally developed to damage computers and or disrupt other softwares. Okay, so this is a harm and often cost uh, unknown uh, to users, or the harm is often cost an um harm uh, that is not known okay to users who inadvertently installed unknown this is unknown okay who uh, inadvertently installed this malware since this type of software usually acts uh, in secret okay so basically um, the, the users of the computer might ha not have any idea that they already have installed certain malware because they just click uh, something that pops up from the computer and basically that is uh, what uh, where malwares are coming from.
Okay? So, examples of malware are spyware, computer viruses, uh, Trojan horses, worms, and adware. Okay? So, normally, uh, we get this from the internet. Okay? When we start from the internet or open a certain uh, website, okay? Which, in, uh, which has uh, this malware. So, in a nutshell, without software, a computer won't perform its function and will simply be a useless inter inert uh, machine. Okay, so aside from hardware, uh, software are also very important uh, part okay, for us to use uh, and uh, efficiently uh, use okay, the computer okay, in its uh, intended purpose. So, different types of software are also exist in direct mutual relations. So, for example, application software, software such as word processing software cannot work unless an operating uh, system will run it. And the OS cannot be developed unless the programming software was used in the first place. So, that's how its um, software are uh, interconnected as well. So, software also needs to be installed before it can be used usually by copying it in a computer or smartphone uh, from a physical support okay or by downloading it over the internet so here when the user operates the computer doesn't want to go uh, the software anymore so they can permanently remove it or by in uninstalling uh, although some malware may require other softwares okay to be uh, uninstalled and some uh, also have uh, require payment okay so software can be purchased online as well or in shops or there are also softwares that are free okay so trial versions or shareware allow the users to test the software for free for a limited time and after that uh, you can choose to buy it if you want to continue to use such software. Uh, freeware and open source software instead can be used without paying anything. So this is uh, even providing the source codes used to make the program so that anyone can modify or improve it. But mostly nowadays, they are for a fee or subscription fees. Okay. Um, what about uh, the different processing system? Okay, so we have the uh, two types. Okay, so we have the batch processing and online real-time processing system. So what is the difference between or what are these types of processing systems? Uh, in a batch processing system, like or similar transactions are collected, sorted, and processed in the master files at the end of the day or some other time period. So meaning here, before the data can be processed into a usable form, um, it must have uh, at least collected okay, a certain number of like or similar transactions okay, before it can be processed. So this system usually involves the production of numerous printouts. However, misstatements in a batch processing system caused by incorrect programs or even uh, data may not be detected immediately because there are time delays in the processing of the transaction. So this is what should uh, the auditor uh, should understand okay, on how the entity process their data. If that is or if they are using batch processing, so this problem uh, will be encountered by the auditor. So he should have at least uh, an audit trail to determine its accuracy. Okay, so an example of batch processing is the manner that credit card companies process the billings. Okay, for example, customer does not receive a bill for each separate credit card purchase, but there is a one monthly bill for all of that month's purchases. Okay, so this is an example of batch processing. So, the bill is created through the batch processing where all the data are collected and held until the bill is processed as a group at the end of the billing cycle or once a month. 
Okay, what about online real-time processing system? So, in this type of processing system, this is characterized by the data that are assembled from uh, more than one location and records that are updated immediately. Meaning, if there is a certain transaction, uh, the account or balances immediately is uh, updated. Okay, without waiting for another similar transactions before it can be processed that's why it's called uh, online real time okay so it involves the posting of transactions at as it occurs to several file files without immediate printouts so an example of online real time processing is the deposits or withdrawal in the atm okay for saving as accounts uh, even if a withdrawal was previously made in one branch or in the other location the depositor's account balance is immediately updated. You can get your receipt, which is immediately updated about its balance. Okay. Uh, the depositor can only withdraw the remaining balance on his account. Okay, whatever that is reflected on that balance. Okay, so that's an example of online real-time data processing. Okay, so those are the different data processing using the softwares. Okay, so we will continue with centralized, decentralized, and distributed processing systems. Okay, so because this is very important uh, for the auditor to understand, okay, especially on how the data are being processed because this is where uh, sometimes misstatements occurs or errors. So in a centralized information system, processing is performed in one computer. That's why it's called centralized. Okay, and this is normally in a single location. So, all transactions should be collected and processed in one computer. So, it is usually based on a centrally situated mainframe where all processing, even the storage, are um, lo located okay, or performed. So, this kind of system is typically intended to computerize a diversity of operations within the organization so especially if um in this case uh there is just one computer that is available okay, in an ent in the entity so for instance uh, using a big central computer for industry can automate its order entry inventory control billing and accounting operations but again this is uh, with the use of a single computer okay what about decentralized so, this is the opposite of centralized uh, information system. So, this is characterized by uh, built up of computer systems in different locations, meaning there are available computers in different set of locations to process the transactions. Uh, data are stored also uh, in these uh, computers at multiple locations where it is located. So, therefore, the data is processed in standalone or localized computer. So, ordinarily, uh, the computers involved are not interconnected by a network to users at various sites and uh, cannot share data unless they can share it if it is being asked to be sent uh, through the internet or other means. Okay, one benefit of this type of system is that users have more immediate access to the information and they do not have to wait for processing time because they have they own uh or they process it on their own uh, computer unlike with the centralized system where uh, they sh they should wait first before all the transactions are processed from a single uh, location and computer and lastly for uh, distribution or uh, distributed processing system so, in this case, transactions for a single database are processed at various sites, okay, distributed. Uh, processing may be on either a batch or even uh, online real-time basis. So, this is a much advanced uh, processing method, okay. For instance, payroll is processed for a specific area of the employees in that uh, area or, or location while other branch they will also process the payroll yet the overall payroll information is in one database meaning um, there are several branches of the entity and the database for the payroll system is in the main office while in the branches they can also process their payroll 
but they still are using the single database information. That's how a distributed information system is done. Okay, so this is more like of the decentralized, but in this case, uh, they operate in a single database. Unlike in the decentralized, they have their own. Okay, they cannot share it unless uh, they will be asked okay, to send these types of information. Okay, so those are uh, the different uh, principle or concepts in software.